Hi guys, welcome to this video. Today I'm going to be looking through this massive box of my old Spectrum games. There's quite a few in there. And let's have a look. I'm going to get them out one by one and have a little trip down memory lane. Come with me, it'll be fun. Right, so here's the box, look. Ooh, with all the tapes in. Let's get them out one at a time and have a look through, shall we? Check them out. Right, let's start with this one then. The Trapdoor. Do you remember that? The Trapdoor. That was a good game. Made by... Who was it made by? Let's have a look inside and find out. Look at that tape. It's slightly kind of wrinkly there. So we've got... Look at that nice kind of blue and yellow. That's nice, isn't it? It's made by Alternative Software. I remember playing this. The other side of the tape is blank. And in the case... Got multi-fold. So it's originally released by Piranha Software Limited. So I'm not sure what was going on there. There's some you are super Burke. Your real objective is to become a super Burke. Oh, he's just Burke to begin with. Um, there's various instructions. There's quite a lot. Too much to read. It says type load. Do do and press the enter key. Some little screenshots there. Look, you see them. It was quite a big sprite to be lumbering about the screen from what I remember. So there we go. Trapdoor, let's put it back. We'll put it to one side and let's get the next one. What's coming out of the box? Cauldron. <laughs> With a witch on the front, look. Look at that, it was £1.99. pence for the Spectrum 48, 1 to 8 and plus 2. This was made by Silverbird. It's looking a little bit sort of faded on here, look. Let's have a look inside. Take the plastic case. We'll open that. Let's have some screenshots as usual on the back. Can you see those? Can't remember much about this game. I think I played it, but maybe not a great deal. There's the tape. Cauldron. I like the silver bird sort of font. That's quite nice, isn't it? Let's have a look at the instructions. I've got this like, pink and black stripey thing going on. And there they are. Look out for these other exciting Silverbird titles. Night Gunner, Skateboard Joust, Rebel Star 2. I remember Rebel Star 2 and Hopper Copper. Some basic, you're a hag, the hag's mission. You play the part of the hag. You must fly across the land searching for the keys to the underworld, as usual. It says it's under license from Palace Software, the bottom there. So you're the hag and you've got to do haggy things and become the best hag, generally. I think that's kind of what you do in a nutshell. So there we go. That's Cauldron. Cauldron, however you want to pronounce that. What's next? Oh, I've done a separate video about this one. Yi Ya or Ya Ya Kung Fu. It was by Imagine the Name of the Game, which are kind of some sort of subsidiary of Konami, I believe. Uh, the game looked nothing like this. This looks really cool. The game looks like that. You've got, these are all, I think, either Amstrad, probably says actually. Uh, oh, yes, yeah, so a screenshot's taken from various computer formats which probably includes Amstrad and Commodore 64, but not the Spectrum version, I don't believe, because there's just too much colour. Yeah, anyway, so I have looked at this one in greater depth, so I shan't go through it too much. This is a nice case, larger than average case, more sturdy, black case. It's got a fold-out book with all the different kind of kicks you can do and the scores you get for them. Here's a tape, with that nice Imagine logo. Black on the other side. So yeah, I won't dwell on that. Watch my other video specifically on this this game if you want to find out a bit more and look at the instructions in more depth for that one. Put that one to one side. What's next? Oh, it's the classic. Do you remember what this is? Do you know what this is? I don't know whether it's meant to have something actually on it. This is The Hobbit. I don't know whether it has a... It seems odd to have a very you know, plain black. I think it maybe has something that's missing from this one. Here it is. Look at that. I really like those stripes. Iconic. Sinclair, 48K ZX Spectrum, that was by Melbourne House. I was reading a bit about this. The the woman that wrote it, there was two of them, I think. Um, I don't know if I can remember her name, but she kind of just got involved just a bit by chance in uh, in Australia. She was not meaning to get into the gaming industry, I seem to remember. She just said, helped out, with, and uh, she ended up being one of the two people who worked on this game, and obviously it's a classic. There's the rules, look, and stuff in here. I won't, won't dwell on this either, but... It's sort of telling you what you can and can't do in terms of the commands. 
and the syntax, the acceptable syntax, etc. So using arrow keys, special commands, light and dark, yeah, yeah, yada, yada, yada. It's very texty, but essentially that is telling you how to play The Hobbit. Um, let's have a look. What I never got very far with The Hobbit. Didn't really have the patience for it, to be honest. But it had some nice graphics. Um, so it's, uh, side one is a copy of side two. It's a bit weird, isn't it? So it's the same thing on both. Side one is a copy of side two. Side one is a copy of side two. It says it on both sides. Anyway, I liked the Melbourne House logo. Um, there it is again, look. Uh, it's nice, kind of cool. Anyway, so there we go. Nice big box. Classic game. Put that to one side. What's coming up next? There was a double case here. These are two Houston games. Fire Lord and Eurydium. I remember playing Fire Lord. I remember playing them both. Fire Lord in particular was good. Let's see if I can see any screenshots. So look, the two tapes are in there. Eurydium and Fire Lord. Fairly bland in terms of tape design. But there are only tapes to wang into a tape player and load. Uh, let's take this out and have a little look-see. So it's stuff about Eurydium there, and it's the same loading procedure as always. Load, duh, duh. Press enter, that's Eurydium on that side, I presume fire, fire lord on this side. Oh, look at this, this is, this is cool, because it does actually have a screenshot, look. I'll tell you about what, like your inventory, bartering in Torot, is that the place, or Toro, I don't know how you pronounce that. Good graphics on this game, I thought it was enjoyable. I like it. So there we go. Don't know why I ended up with a double pack. So uh, there we go. It was obviously released as part of this twin pack. Put that to one side. Very good. What's next? Let's, let's move on to this. Daily Thompson's Decathlon. This has got a similar box um, to the Yaya Kung Fu. In fact, yeah, same, same, same kind of deal here. Look at that ocean logo, ocean. Daily Thompson's Decathlon, 1984, it came out. What does it say there? Five events on each side of the tape. Clear memory to load after. All right, so five sporting events on each side. I don't remember that. There we go. What's the little leaflet here from the ocean about the game? Loading day one or day two. Oh yeah, they were over, it's like a bit over two days, wasn't it? And there's some little adverts up for some other games. We've got Hunchback 2. Don't know what that one is. Is that Camelot? No. Cavalon? I don't even know what that says, that one. Uh, Gilligan's Gold and uh, Dave Thompson's together. I like that. I liked these cases and the little diddy booklets that folded out. And they kind of clipped together. You could drop that. It was fine. Yeah, looked looks nice. Better than the plastic, the really, these jingly jangly ones. Right, next game. Oh, this was a classic. Green Beret. This had a big case. This was also by Imagine Look as well. And it was also a very hard game. It's a fun game, but it was a hard game. I didn't get very far on Green Beret, but I really wanted to. I used to get so frustrated with it. But there's the spine. So frustrating. You know, one, one dagger, one sl you know, one stab and you, you're down. Green Beret, the name of the game. Um, let's have a little look at what's inside here. It's got some quite nice... It's got a nice pamphlet, hasn't it? Look, some screenshots there. Does that ring bells? It certainly does for me. Hard game, fun game, classic game, hard game. You have to rescue the captives. You are the green beret. I wasn't much of a green beret. Pretty, I was pretty lame. There's some instructions there. Look, hints and tips. Blah blah blah. So yeah, there's green beret. What's next? Let's grab this. Now, I don't really know this one. I'll say this one. There's, what, four, ga four games? Quattro Adventures. So you've got a Dizzy game, Super Robin Hood, sorry, I'm not sure, Ghost Hunters and Vampire. I don't know they fit four games on there. I don't know. Quattro Adventure, it says, look. Ghost Hunters and Super Robin Hood on that side. Oh, and you've got Dizzy and Vampire on that side. I don't remember much about these. Obviously, remember Dizzy. That's a classic. Let's say some stuff in here. Let's just get the thingy out and have a look. It says Vampire. Supernatural smash from Dynamic. The people who brought you army moves. Oh, yeah, I remember army moves. <clears throat> Robin Hood. Um, will you have all? We'll have... 
What's that? We'll have you all off a quiver with excitement. Oh, I see. It's like one of the puns. Your Sinclair. Dizzy, 90%. Go on, buy it. Don't be a chicken, it says. And then Ghost Hunters, another superbly presented Codemasters game. Wow. Codemasters. Are they all Codemasters? Yeah. Looks like they maybe were. Loads of instructions. Too much text to read. Too tiny to read. Well, look, there's other four, four quattros as well you can get. Sports and power. So we're, we're just looking at the, the adventure one. Right, get back in your box. We're going to be here all day looking at these, aren't we? Maybe I won't be able to do them all. Maybe I'll just prioritise. I remember the day that we bought this, Finders Keepers. Got a crack in it, unfortunately. Mastertronic, they made quite a few games. Got quite a few of theirs. This is the 199 range. Does that mean they're all 199? I think so. Let's have a look inside. First of all, the tape. Nothing too special. I do like the Mastertronic lettering there. That's cool. Looks a bit like Blockbuster or something. It's got a pink. Apparently, the coloured ones made it more difficult to pirate, I was reading, or something. I don't know. Didn't really know that back in the day. Finders Keepers, the screen displays. Can you see that? There's the, like the king at the top, I think. Yeah, this was a good game. The aim of the game. You're not allowed to copy it, lend or hire, and that's all prohibited apparently. This was 1985, this game. Oops. Right, next game. Horace Ghost Scheme. Was this the first one? I think it was one to, out of the trilogy of Horace games. Fairly, quite nice silver style tape, that. Low skiing. I really liked, yeah, these stripes. I don't know, just iconic for me, anyway. There he is, Horace, poor man's Pac-Man, on his skis. This was made, was it by Scion and Melbourne House? Looks like it. It says, Horace Goes Skiing is a sequel to the very successful Hungry Horace. Yes, sorry, Hor Hungry Horace came first. That was the Pac-Man copy, wasn't it? Good game, but it wasn't Pac-Man really, was it? The Horace series pioneers the idea of interactive cartoons. Oh, really? Help Horace to slalom down the mountain course between the flags and avoiding the trees. But first, you must cross the busy roads to get to the ski slopes. A complex, colourful and outstanding computer game. It was a good game. I did enjoy this game. It's quite a hard game as well. It had the frogger element when you were trying to cross the road. That was a bit of a copy, really. But anyway, when you had a spectrum and there weren't, you couldn't go and play in the arcades and whatever... That's all you had. It was good enough. It was very good, in fact. Jet Set Willy. Look at that. Jet oh, look, this has got a... It's, this is it's called a padlock system. I think this is copy protection. Do you have to... Don't, don't lose this. Replacement cards will be issued. No, do not lose as replacement cards will not be issued. Yeah. That was how your copy protection worked. I can't remember how it worked, to be honest, anyway. Apparently it did. Jet Set Willy for the 48k Spectrum. This was 1984. Nothing particularly exciting going on here. What's it says here? Not a lot. There was a series of games, wasn't there, with Willy as well? I forget. I forget the ins and the outs. Better put this back in because, as I said, no replacements will be issued. Certainly not now. In the year 2022, what's this? Sir Lancelot. That was a quite good game from what I remember. Another Melbourne House number. Let's take it out and have a look. Some screenshots. Look at those beauties. Beauties. At last, an arcade adventure game suitable for both the 16K and 48K spectrum. 24 different rooms with three exclamation marks. Can't believe they had 24. Outrageous. So, side one uses rapid load. Side two uses normal speed. Again, I don't recall that. Could, could some load faster than others? Or maybe it loaded faster on the 48k. Oh, I don't know. I don't know. Moving on. Rock and wrestle. I don't re remember that. I'm not going to go into it. I'll show you the screenshots on the back. Reviews of the Commodore 64 version as usual. Fighting Warrior, I do remember this. This was interesting. Melbourne House. It's 
played a lot of Melbourne House games. Look at those screenshots. Look. The fighting games. It'd be like, uh, was it like sort of by Barbarian, but before Barbarian came out? It's got someone's name in it. Look. Peter Carter and Jamie Carter. Seems to be some sort of. Not sure who that really belonged to. Maybe both. Maybe they shared it. Maybe they were good. Maybe there's a battle for ownership. I don't know. So, there we go. Some joystick controls. Let's have a look at those screenshots. I like. Oh, that's quite nice, isn't it? That. That, that writing, that font. Look at those screenshots. This, this winged beast down the bottom. I guess that must be the guy on the front, isn't it? It's him. Okay. Fighting warrior, get back in your in your case. What else? Mr. Freeze. I'll just show you. I'm not going to get that one out. There it is. Firebird. Yeah, that's what was confusing me. When the Silverbird company, there was a Firebird. Were they related? Were they copying each other? I don't know. Mr. Freeze, I vaguely remember that one. It's going back a long way. Checkered Flag was a classic, wasn't it? I remember enjoying that, but I reckon if I played it today, I would be well disappointed. It would not be exhilarating. But there we go. We've got Chiller. It says five astonishing screens with multi levels. I really like the descriptions of these, like they're making it sound so amazing. Well, it was at the time, it was to be fair. But when you read them now, they're, they don't seem too amazing anymore. Chiller, the aim of the game. Nice red writing there. And this was 1985, this game. Yeah. Very good. Get back in. I like the yellow case. I'll bring these out, didn't they? It was a bit different from black. So that was nice. Let's go through a few of these. Spectrum pool. Yeah, God, remember that. Remember that. It was basic, but it was fun. Go on, then we'll have a look. Green, very green. Going with sort of the pool table. Green. I like that. Just says pool. Truly amazing version of the game of pool. Using full sound and colour graphics. Yeah. Get back in your box. Go on. Ghostbusters. There's been a few Ghostbusters games, hasn't there, over the years on various formats. Oh, look, it's got a little fold-out Ghostbusters. Oh, it's folding out. It's folding out quite a lot. Oh, it's quite nice, isn't it? Is that like Tower of Gozo or whatever it's called? There's a thing you can fill in your details and send it back. Uh, that's quite quite good quite comprehensive instructions for that game. Maybe it was quite complicated. Uh, and there's some other games there that they're advertising. Very good. By Activision. Um, Way of the Exploding Fist. That was amazing. Another Melbourne House game. I didn't realise I was so dominated by them. Look at those manoeuvres. Can you see them? It's really good. This was really good on the Commodore 64. Nice uh, font again, exploding fist. It's got another foldy outy thing, a bit like what we've just seen for the Ghostbusters one actually. Getting more and more detailed and instructive. Oh, what does it say here? Enjoy these other great titles. Starion, astonishing, astounding, phenomenal by Crash. The Hobbit, a most impressive package, says the Daily Express. Muggsy, a graphically stunning game by the Daily Express. Classic Adventure, definitely one for your collection by your computer. Hampstead, computer game of the year by the listener. And Terra Moloni, ter I'm witty graphic adventure of spoof package holiday from the authors of Hampstead. Don't know that one, pass, but I'm sure it was very witty. Put that back in there. Checkered flag here, yeah, we've covered that. Seem to have got another checkered flag. I mean, how greedy is that? I've got two. Weird. The Oracle's Cave, what's this like? This looks very basic. Doric Computer Services. The Oracle's Cave. Chris Dorrell. I feel like I need to explore this a little bit. See the. Uh, Coming off in it, a bit of water damage or something. I suppose the glue that holds that on is, you know, what, 80, it's coming up for 90, it's 40, 40 years? Blooming heck. That's ripped, it's just ripped off, hasn't it? It's coming up for 40 years old, that glue. No wonder it's not sticking anymore. I mean, what I suppose we have to say is that the glue on that side has done pretty well in all this time. Uh oh, this looks a bit 
dodgy this I don't know if I can can I get that back on oh yeah I think I have phew thought I'm in trouble there right now we've got Hungry Horace of course that was the first in the Horace series we heard about that earlier in this video didn't we oh it's looking a bit discoloured on the tape by Scion Limited in 1982 that is an old game loading a program what does that say Lisa Moon that who owned it? Is it Lisa? I don't know. Anyway, there's the keys and various stuff. It says, Hungry Horace includes sound effects. To amplify the sound from the spectrum, insert the lead between the microphone sockets of the spectrum and tape recorder. Ensure that there is no cassette in your recorder. Try setting your recorder to record or play. And in many cases, the sound from the spectrum will be amplified through the loudspeaker of the recorder. Very technical. There we go. Right, this was a good game, this Transylvanian Tower. Like, it wasn't graphically stunning, although I think it tells us that it was. Um, a spine-chilling adventure with spectacular 3D graphics. Can you rid the world of this Transylvanian Tower before you introduce you to the dark world of the living dead? Read that too fast, sorry. There we go, there's the tape. It was like, yeah, you had to go up three levels or something, or five levels, sorry and basically kind of walk around these rooms. It was a text adventure from what I remember. You had to kill a vampire. I never killed a vampire, I don't think. But we had a lot of fun in our family with that one. It was a classic. Right, Horace goes, hang on. We've done that one. Got two of them as well. You know, uh, Skate Crazy, don't remember that one really. There's the graphics on the back. I'm not gonna linger on it. Looks fairly good, doesn't it? But again, I don't think they're the Spectrum versions. Skate Crazy. We're getting there. Fruit Loop. Look at that basic. I, that's not the best drawing, is it? It's not even coloured in properly. What was it about this game? A, it's a smash hit by Home Computer Weekly. Blast your way through 60 levels of machine code action. Collecting apples and blue bananas and dodging deadly guards and blue boxes all within a time limit. You'll never do it. It says, sounds like a challenge. It says Mark Four. wrong side of tape, load Fruit Loop. Just love discovering these little kind of like human interventions. Very basic looking tape, like printed on the cheap. Well, there we go, that's Fruit Loop. Mark four. Okay, oak. I don't remember that game. I don't remember playing it. This was a classic. I loved it. Run Baby Run. Me and my friend used to play this a lot. You basically, you're like, um, I think you're a criminal in a car escaping like a scene of a crime or whatever. Either way, you're trying to outrun some police cars. So you set off and you get a few seconds. And after those seconds are up, uh, the police cars start to follow your exact path. And the idea is you have to sort of double back on yourself uh, uh, on these like kind of maze layouts, meant to be roads. You double back on yourself, causing the police cars that are following your exact every turn to crash into each other. And the idea is obviously to get them to all crash into each other. Um, it was a really... Really basic, but really fun game. It was a good idea. It's the sort of thing I'd like to try and remake in some way. Um, because it was really good fun. Of course, it got more and more frenetic and you got more cars. And sometimes, you know, obviously, you could do really well if you could really get them winding around and keep doubling back on your path. And then you can sort of laugh as they'll crash into each other. Good game. Run, baby, run. And it reminds me always of the Cheryl Crow song. Tank tracks, remember that? Tank game, another one from the 199 range from Mastertronic. Nice tape design. There we go, tanked, pretty basic. Can you enter the explosive battlefields of the Second World War and engage in combat with the columns of enemy tanks? You can enter. <laughs> Sorry, that's a question. I'm terrible at reading. Terrible. As in true tank battles, wind force and terrain play in an all important part in determining the winning strategy. And it's Kempston joystick compatible. Remember the Kempston joystick? We could play that one with it. What's this? Pajama Rama. Oh, I remember that. That's another. Hang on. That's another really bad drawing. Kind of like. What was that other bad one? Oh, Fruit Loop, Oracle's Cave. I suppose the Dragon one's a bit better, but those. Oh dear. I, I could have done a better job than that. It was of its time, I suppose. Microgen. Recorded on both sides. Pajama, I can't remember what you did in this. Welcome to the nightmare world of Wally Week. Even Wallies have to sleep. The trouble is being a Wally nightmares are more troublesome than you would think. 
Uh, is it like you have to wander around in pyjamas in the middle of a nightmare? I think that was the gist, wasn't it? I remember playing that on the Amstrad, it looks a lot better. I did, li I did like this pyjama, I shouldn't slag it off all the time. Sports Hero, I don't remember that game at all. Looks like a very cheap version of David Thompson or something, I don't know. Shan't dwell on that one either, but you can have a look at the tape there. Um, booty, everyone remembers Booty, don't they? It's a bit like a Manic Miner type game. Platformer with uh, a pirate theme to it. Look inside. I don't know, I'm talking like that. It's not pirate, is it? There we go. Jim the Cabin Boy must make his way below decks to collect various items of booty automatically picked up when he walks past it. Nice, nice tip there. Strewn around the ships, so you have to collect stuff. Step, collect the booty. Simple, really. I'm sure it wasn't. Jason's Gem. Wow. Remember that one as well. Uh oh, look, this, I don't know if I can, uh, it's a bit mouldy, look. I don't think I should really focus on that. Ah, I might have to, well, I'll have to wipe that one down or something. Give that a bit of demold treatment. It has been sit, sat in this box in the shed for a long time. So I'll forgive it for that. I've got three ones left. Finders Keepers, have we had Finders Keepers yet? I'm losing track. Horace and the Spiders, that was the, the third one. Let's do one at a time, let's keep it organized. Horace and the Spiders was the third game in the Horace Trilogy. I think I was reading they were trying to make a fourth, but oh, maybe I made that up. I think I was reading it somewhere on the web. Um, so you had three stages here. You had to climb the hills. That was right. Jumping over the hills. Obviously, if you don't make the jump, you die. You lose life, like in real life, obviously. Then you had to cross the spider bridge and sort of jump down and not get like pulled up and bitten. And then the last stage was the exciting one. Um, you had to run around and kill the spiders, like make holes, let them jump in it and then stamp on them. And when you did that, once you did that third level, it went back to the beginning, but it got a little bit qu quicker and a bit trickier, and you just went round and round and round. Yeah, I was going on about amplifying the sound again here. It's a bit, it was a great game, one of my favourites, actually. Probably one of the ones I played the most. Um, Finders Keepers, yeah. I don't know if we've looked at this one yet or not. Yeah, we have, we have haven't we? I recognise it now. So I won't dwell on that one. I don't know why I've got a couple of these. And then this one which is apparently called Zadon. But I think I was not really old enough to know that perhaps the X was a Z, so I think you, I used to call it Exadon. So for years I just called it Exadon, and that wasn't wrong. That wasn't right, was it? I like that cover. This was mystical, this game. Fun as well. Runs in 48K on the Sinclair Spectrum. I think I've done another video about playing this game a, year, a couple of years ago. Um, so I've got on an emulator. It's got a nice green as well by Quicksilver, this one. Quicksilver Game Lords Club, look at that, exclusive membership form. So, I, no, I didn't fill that in, but you could. You can join that club, whatever, I don't know what that gave you. Oh, it's got quite a bit. Oh, look, it's got these. Oh, did you put these on your keyboard, I think, didn't you? So, so I'm just showing, there, you have to pull those out, stick it on your keyboard, and it told you, it's kind of a reminder of which keys to press. It was a good game, it was pretty original, this one. That's some good sound effects. Um, yeah, and I liked it. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed watching this video. That's all the games. Um, if you did, well, brilliant. L leave me a comment. Perhaps tell me if, what your favourite games were. And if you remember any of these ones I've covered, yeah, give me a shout. Let me know. Right, so, well, there we go. All those games from yesteryear. What fun. I don't know what to do with them, really. I just sort of keep them as memorabilia because I never play them off the tapes. I can't read the tapes. I haven't got a spectrum anymore. Um, so if I ever want to play them, I'll just try and get them on an emulator online or something. But I like to keep these physical copies to to have and to hold. Just, I don't know, I'm weird. Anyway, thanks for watching. Bye.